Hi, welcome back. Today we are going to talk about a fascinating mathematical wonder that appears in many aspects of nature. As we all know, we use various scientific theories to model and understand the workings of different types of physical systems in different scales and under different conditions in this vast universe. These theories are based on the governing laws of nature written in the universal language of mathematics. Among the diverse mathematical tools and methodologies utilized in these theories resides an elegant branch of mathematics called the calculus of variation. This branch of mathematics is used in the principle of least action, for the study of minimal surfaces, and in many other areas of physics and mathematics that require constraint optimization. If we investigate such problems, we stumble across a common challenge. That is optimizing a functional in the following form. Simply, that means finding the optimal function that either minimizes or maximizes its output. When finding the extremal of a function, we use a key principle. That is setting the variation, in other words, the derivative equal to zero. Afterward, the position where the extremal is present, which is defined by the values of each of the variables, can be found. For example, consider a 2D manifold defined by two variables as shown. In this function k of x, there is an extremal. Notice that the slope at that point is zero. So, by setting the derivative of the function equal to zero, the value of x that defines the position of the extremal can be found. The same procedure is carried out in higher dimensions. In our case, we are dealing with a set of functions instead of a function with a particular output. At first, it might seem distressing, but if you think of it carefully, it could be understood that the same idea that we discussed previously can also be utilized in this case. According to what that implies, as our function deviates away from the optimal function, which is the extremal, output decreases in the case of a maximum and increases in the case of a minimum. When the variation of the optimal function is zero, the value that the integral will spit out is going to be the extremal. The values you will obtain by using a varied version of the function are always higher if it's a minimum and lower if it's a maximum. If that sounds like a lot, here is some graphical intuition. So how can we apply this to our problem? As we discussed previously, we know that the optimal function that we are looking for is the extremal among all the outputs that the variations of the function spit out. Here we must pay attention to the word variation in this statement. If we think about it, a question that naturally arises is how such a function can be varied, especially in a way such that we can vary it by specific amounts by varying a parameter. Consider we pick some random function and add that to the optimal function that is the extremal. By doing that we get a new function that is different from the function that we initially began with. In that manner, we can vary our original function. But how can we vary it by specific amounts by varying a parameter? So we know that we can vary the function by adding some other random function. Our goal is to figure out how to control the amount by which we vary the function. To accomplish that we can simply scale the function that we add to the original function. By scaling down and adding it the variation is lesser. Similarly by scaling up the function and adding it the the original function, the variation is higher. So we can vary the variation of the original function by using a parameter. With the help of this idea, we can develop a new expression as follows. In this expression, the function that we are adding to vary the original function is multiplied by a new parameter. In this expression, y is the original function and the uppercase y is the modified version of the original function. p of x is the random function that we add to create the error, and the amount of error is controlled by this new parameter, 
that we are multiplying the error function with. When we take the integral of this new function, we can obtain the outputs of the varied version of the function. So when the parameter's value is zero, we get the original function, thereby giving the extremal output. As we did before, we can now think of this relationship graphically as follows. As the parameter deviates away from zero, the function's error increases, and the output also deviates away from the optimal output, which is the extremal. By looking at this, it becomes immediately clear that our problem has turned into a simple optimization problem. We can optimize the output in the same way we optimize single variable functions. We know that the derivative of the output with respect to the parameter is zero when the parameter's value is zero. So we can set up a relationship as follows. Here, we are taking the derivative of a function's integral. In this instance, we can use the Leibniz rule. We can rewrite this expression according to the Leibniz rule as follows. Now to simplify this derivative, you need to use the multivariable chain rule. Now, we can simplify this expression further without much trouble. We can split this integral into two, as shown. And afterward, we can integrate one integral by parts, as shown. Here, we have to take into consideration one of the conditions that we've set initially. The function that we are adding to create the error is zero at the x values a and b. It's because we are not varying the integration boundaries. Notice that p of x appears in both integrants. So we can factor that out and recombine the two integrants into a single integral. Okay, now it's time to listen to this mu that has been hanging behind all the time. We are evaluating this as mu approaches zero. When mu is zero, we get back the original function. And we are going to make that change too. The function p of x is random, which is arbitrary. For the value of the integral to be zero, the expression in brackets must equal zero. And we've finally arrived at the solution. This equation is called the Euler-Lagrange equation. This is the most important equation in variational calculus. The whole subject of Lagrangian mechanics is also based on this relationship. Thanks to this relationship, we can optimize functions that appear in many areas of physics, mathematics, and sometimes even economics. If we replace x with t and y with x, we get the equation of the function of the path, which minimizes the Lagrangian. That is simply the principle of least action in a mathematical context. The key insight that led to the discovery of this relationship was given by a young mathematician named Lagrange. He worked extensively in the field of constraint optimization, and the Lagrange multiplier method is one such popular work of his. Lagrange wrote to Leonard Euler, who was a well-known mathematician at the time. Seeing the gravity of his workings, Euler decided to collaborate with him. This elegant result was utilized to crack many complex problems, such as the hang chain problem, which is renowned as the catenary problem, the brachistochrone problem, and Newton's minimal resistance problem. Moreover, it is also used to determine geodesics in intricate space-time manifolds in Einstein's general theory of relativity.